Before you go and waste your hard earned coins buying some overhyped skincare product that might not even do anything for you, or before you overlook a true gem that is not spoken about a lot, make sure you watch this video. We're gonna talk about skincare products that are overhyped and those that are worth the hype, so keep watching. So this is part two, well, part three if you count the fact that I had to re-record this because I was recording with my microphone dead. So this video comes from feedback from viewers quite like you. Um, I actually took to, well, actually my assistant Maya took to my community board and asked you guys to be specific about which skincare products are overhyped and which ones are worth the hype. Now, some of y'all failed the assignment because you weren't specific. Some of y'all just named a brand and didn't tell me a product from the brand. Why would, you know, but it's okay. We, we, gonna, we gonna learn and grow together, it's all right. I'm gonna be Bessie. We gonna start with the overhyped products first. Here we go, starting with Actives. So Ashley Chili says, Pixie Glow Tonic is mostly just water with little actives in there. Hashtag overhyped. So I pulled up the inky list for the Pixie Glow Tonic, right? Cause I was like, how many actives you need? <laughs> so here's the thing, right? So I pulled up the inky list, first couple of ingredients, water, glycolic acid, sodium hydroxide, butylene glycol, glycerin, witch hazel. So there's got some, you know, glycolic acid is an exfoliant, glycerin is a high, is a humectant. Uh, witch hazel helps, you know, sometimes if you have a oily skin, it can kind of kind of balance your skin. For some people, witch hazel can be like a, don't, don't put, don't you put that near my face. Now here's the thing, right? When you look at ingredient lists, and when I first decided that we were gonna just focus on skincare on this channel, I thought I was gonna come up in here you know, before I even mentioned a product, I was gonna look through the inky list, look up the ingredients and this and that. That's a boring video to me. Also, not only that, as many cosmetic chemists will probably tell you, looking at an inky list doesn't tell you the full story about a product because it does not tell you where the products were sourced from, which percentage of the product is in there, what concentration, yada, yada, yada. Now, yeah, the ingredients are listed in the order of concentration, but that's still not really telling you much, right? So that's one. Two, I feel like some people think when water is the first ingredient that it means like the product's watered down. That's not the case. Now, what I will say is that, yeah, it, pr it probably is. <laughs> It probably is an overhyped product and all that other stuff before. I wasn't speaking to Ashley in general, in, uh, specifically, I was talking to in general, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it probably is overhyped and I'll tell you why I think it's overhyped. I think because Pixi is ultimately, they, yeah, they have a lot of skincare products but they all sell a lot of makeup. And I think at one point with skincare, we went from super fluff, like, oh my God, it's pink and it smells like flowers. When, when you know, people spoke about skincare, to like sometime around last year during lockdown where everybody had to have a science degree to talk about a cleanser. So I feel like, you know, there's like these two extremes and I like to live somewhere in the middle, right? But anyway, I think because, you know, the Pixie Glow Tonic was going to a lot of people that, you know, are really into makeup who may not be as into skincare or have that skincare knowledge as a lot of you guys who watch a channel like this do. And you know, glycolic acid can do some amazing things for, for some people's skin. Especially if somebody doesn't have a regular skincare routine, they're not exfoliating regularly. They put something like that on and all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, look at this. And it's just like, well, yeah, if you had a regular skincare routine, like, mm. So I, I do agree that it probably is overhyped, but I don't know, I'm starting to learn to let people have things in my tender, tender twilight years. Okay, anyway, moving on. As we move on to overhyped, we are moving into like just brands in general. And one person said, Tatcha is most definitely overrated. All caps, but no cap. And I was like, okay, well, hey, can you expand a little bit more on why you think so? And 
crickets. You know, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. You, you know, not everybody read the caption where I said, you know, be specific, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's all good. Now, I have to say with Tatcha, um, <laughs> and again, this is going back to where the two extremes in skincare where it was like, oh my God, bougie skincare, or oh, I love the way it smells and the way it, and look at the packaging. And, the, and then the other extreme was like, everything is like so sciencey, right? I ain't gonna lie to you. Tatcha probably would not be a brand where I would spend my coin because some things I just wonder, why is this so cost so much? But of course, I was, you know, turned out a little bit by, by Tatcha, just a little something. Um, when I did my skincare routine swap with, with Sage, and you know, I was using her bougie skincare products and I actually wound up liking a couple of things from Tatcha. The other day I went to Sephora inside JCPenney. I picked up the dewy cream, the dewy skin cream. That, that felt amazing. Like there are certain times I feel like where, you know, you definitely want something that's effective. You don't want a whole bunch of fluff, but sometimes you might want a little, you know, you just want a little, feel a little bougie, feel a little extra sometimes with your skincare routine. And I, I feel like, you know, we can have a balance of both. As with brands, and we got more of a robust answer. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name. So I'm thinking your name is either Tequila, Tequila? But you let me know if I'm pronouncing it uh, correctly or incorrectly. She says CeraVe products, particularly the cream moisturizer. It literally burns! The cream to phone cleanser gave me contact dermatitis. I really wanted these products to work. Stick to what you know. CeraVe, yeah, CeraVe is definitely <laughs> overrated. And again, it's kind of like almost a thing with the Pixie. It's like, you know, people who may not have been well-versed in skincare, you know, they see influencers that they love and enjoy to watch, talking about products that are really affordable. And for a lot of people, CeraVe products work very well. You'll see people who come on this channel and talk about their hyperpigmentation routines. And there's, you know, sometimes a CeraVe product included in the routine. And it works well for a lot of people. I tried some CeraVe products and I just felt like I needed, a, I just needed a little more. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to overspend on my skincare, but I also don't want like some bland blah experience, you know? Moving on to moisturizers. Adelaide May says that Neutrogena Hydra Boost Gel Cream is overhyped. And then Denise Jones says, very few actives. And the ones that are good are at the bottom of the inky lid. And then R.A. John says, yup, my skin hates it. Plus the scent is very strong. I threw it away. And then Sam X replied to R.A. John and said, did you use the one for very dry skin? That's the one that's fragrance free and dye free. Hydra Boost was definitely hyped a lot. I actually like the Hydra Boost, but I'm someone who likes gel cream moisturizers. Definitely one of my favorite textures in skincare. I don't think there's a, unless it's something that has way too much fragrance in it that where my nose can't take it. I think there are very few gel creams that, I, that I've tried that I don't like, but I do actually like the um, Hydra Boost a lot. But my question is, do y'all have to have actives in your moisturizer? Like serious question though, because if you are using some sort of treatment product, I would assume maybe like a serum or something like that in your routine, do you really need to have actives in your moisturizer. For me, it depends. When I was uh, first getting on tretinoin, which you know, you kind of have to ease your way into that because of the irritation for some people. I use very basic other stuff in my routine. I think I was using maybe like the Aveeno Oat Balm, what is it called, Oat Gel, whatever it is. That has almost like nothing in it. <laughs> like obviously it has ingredients in there to hydrate your skin. Very few things in there that could potentially be irritating for, for most people, right? I do have moisturizers that do have actives in them. For instance, I really like using the Olay Regenerate micro sculpting cream, the fragrance free one. And then the next thing too, is that, you know, just cause the certain ingredients are at the bottom of the inky list doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing. Some ingredients work best in at a certain percentage. They don't necessarily have to be so high up there. And another thing too, is that some people, like everyone's skin is different. Like no, not everyone needs to have the strongest, most potent actives in their skincare because for some people that can be really irritating. And if you're someone who, you know, you're prone to hyperpigmentation, you know, you don't want a whole bunch of things irritating you in your routine. That said, do you agree is Neutrogena Hydra Boost 
overrated or what? Let me know in the comments. Moving on to cleansers. So R.A. John says that CeraVe moisturizing cleanser feels like lotion. CeraVe cleanser for oily skin leaves my skin parched. Then she said drum roll. Use a little of each together and it's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> my skin is clean without being greasy or stripped. I've tried some CeraVe products before and I can't remember if I tried the moisturizing cleanser, but I do remember something feeling like like a lotion and that's, that's just not something I'm trying to feel on my face. If you agree that CeraVe cleansers are overhyped or if you don't agree, you know, leave me a comment, let me know. Okay, moving on to sunscreens that are overhyped. So Rosa Thomas says, Biosant sunscreen is overhyped. It's loaded with caprylic triglyceride which is basically coconut oil with glycerin. This is so comedogenic and won't agree with most skin types. So I went to Paula's Choice page on caprylic triglyceride, right? And let me show you what, let me read what I got up on here. Now, yes, coconut oil can be pretty comedogenic for a lot of people and putting pure coconut oil on your face can you know not elicit the best experience for a lot of people as well however um cosmetic chemists are really amazing people right they are able to do a process by which they are able to extract the good things that they need from the coconut oil and you know leave the the other parts that may not be beneficial for the skin right so as i mentioned caprylic triglyceride at a glance um, from the Polish Choice website uh, provides emolliency and beneficial fatty acids that help skin resist moisture loss, can also be used to thicken a formula or enhance the penetration of key ingredients, known to improve the spreadability of a product derived from coconut oil and glycerin, clear non-viscous liquid. Okay, so it's derived from coconut oil and glycerin. It is considered an excellent emollient and skin replenishing ingredient. Of note, it's mix of fatty acids, replenish skin surface, and help it to resist moisture loss. Now I'm gonna leave the link to this in the description box so you can read the full thing, but I wanted to point this out specifically. Despite what is often purported on the internet skincare advice sites, there is no research showing caprylic triglyceride is comedogenic or pore clogging. This assumption is often tied to its relation to coconut oil. Theoretically, because its molecular weight of 408 is below 500 Daltons, caprylic triglyceride technically has the ability to penetrate the pore lining, but even that doesn't inherently mean it will clog pores. So there you go. But I would have to say that when it comes to, is it overhyped? I don't really know. I, I don't hear about it that often. I reviewed it uh, sometime last year, you know, when I was bored in quarantine, which is how we got the whole bunch of mineral sunscreen reviews on this channel in the first place. I actually tried it. Um, I like that it didn't give much of a cast, but it wasn't compatible with my skin type. Like it was way too moisturizing for my oily skin, even in the, then I think it was still pretty cold outside when I tried it. But I don't know, is it overhyped? Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the Biosan sunscreen. I don't feel like you have to spend so much on a sunscreen. That's where I'm like, listen, listen. But for some people, you know, your bud, everyone's budget is different. And you know, for some people, if they can't find something that they like, they don't mind spending a little extra coin. So another overhyped sunscreen, Manny Petty B. What's up, boo? said that Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen is overhyped. Some people just don't know the difference between mineral and chemical. Now, I would give this a standing ovation. However, I'm not actually wearing an outfit here. I'm wearing like my gym shorts with my blazers. So I'm gonna just sit down. But here's the thing, right? So I'm just happy that more people with deeper skin tones are talking about sunscreen usage, right? But there is this thing there's a plus and minus behind this. So that is true. A lot of people don't know that there is a difference between mineral sunscreens and chemical sunscreens, right? Now, I had a non-ashy sunscreen series on my blog years ago, which contained a lot of chemical sunscreens, you know, with some mineral sunscreens mixed in, but mostly chemical sunscreens, right? And then my thinking was I needed to title this as non-ashy sunscreens, even though most of them were chemical and chemical sunscreens typically aren't going to give you a white cast was that everyone had this conception that sunscreen period left darker skin tones with a white cast. So that I had to very, you know, make that distinction that it's not gonna leave a white cast. So don't forget, 
we're still working on a lot of our kin folk, our skin folk, um, and our kin folk to wear sunscreen because for many, 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 many years, you know, it wasn't something that was told that we needed. You know, we felt like we're already brown, we're already black. We don't need to wear sunscreen because, you know, that's for white people, which we know that that is not true. Anyway, um, the Super Coop Unseen Sunscreen, I think it feels really good. It can work like a makeup primer for some for some people. Um, people who aren't really well versed in the different sunscreens out there might be like, wow, a clear sunscreen. This is so cool. And it, it does feel nice. Like, I, as a matter of fact, I have it on right now. I happen to have a lot of sunscreens in, well, y'all know why I have a lot of sunscreens, but, but I will say, and someone did bring up this point, Kroger, which, you know, might be called something else where you live. I, I don't, I'm not well versed in Kroger, but check out the Kroger site. I'll link it in the description box to see if you can either buy it online. Sometimes it's in stock to ship to your home. Sometimes it's not. Or maybe there's a grocery store near you that may carry their products, but they have a sunscreen that is a dupe for the Supergoop Unseen. It's not an exact match on the inky list, but technically they're both like clear silicone sunscreens that feel really great on the skin. Except the Kroger one is like 10 bucks. Sometimes you can catch it for even less than that on sale. And you're probably getting more, almost three times the amount of sunscreen in the Kroger versus the Supergoop, which I think is about 30 to maybe $34. So if you can get to that, check it out. I have a video comparing the two, so definitely check that out. I would also agree that it's overhyped, but I understand why, because you know, not everybody's well versed in the skincare like, you know, some of us here on this channel. Moving on to some miscellaneous products that have been overhyped. Miss Brown Beauty says, I'll add Laneige lip sleeping mask as well as the face sleeping mask. Both suck. And I felt like they actually drew moisture out of my skin and lips. Someone else, you know, Musette Destino also commented that Laneige water sleeping mask is overhyped. And then Miss Brown Beauty mentioned, oh, actually they commented on each other's, um, <laughs> Each other's pose, that's, that's cool. Miss Brown Beauty said, yes, it did absolutely nothing for my skin. I heard somewhere that sleeping masks are really just heavy moisturizers. Not sure if that's true, maybe Danielle might know. And here Danielle is right here. So yeah, they are kind of like, I wouldn't say heavy moisturizers. I would say that um, typically the sleeping masks are very hydrating. So maybe like there's a difference in penetration from your average, like maybe like creamy moisturizer. I have not, I don't think I have tried the face sleeping mask, but I have tried a Kiehl's product that might be pretty similar. They're overnight hydrating mask. It has like a really cool gel cream like texture to it. You know, using that, I don't need it very often because it's not often that I need that extra hydration. Sometimes in the winter time I might need it. And you know, I wake up and my skin feels amazing. I personally wouldn't want or need a sleeping mask in my routine. Like I don't use them often enough to justify the price. Like even if it was $5, it wouldn't make sense because I would probably use it maybe like once out of the year. So to me, it wouldn't make sense for me. But I did pull up the ingredient list for the Laneige sleeping mask. And then I also watched a video. I don't know if you guys uh, know the channel Kenna. She's a, I believe she's a formulator. I'm, I wanna say she's a formulator. She definitely has some sort of like cosmetic chemistry background, I believe. And she was going through the, the inky list and if you want to check out her video to kind of get that tea I will link it below but the Laneige sleeping mask has a she actually really really liked it the Laneige sleeping mask has a lot of hydrating ingredients in it glycerin hyaluronic acid there are a number of other like there's some silicones in there that help to soften the skin as well so it's the the inky list makes it sound like really really good but I also watched a portion of a Dr. Dre video where she tried the lip mask which I have tried and I used to really love the lip sleeping mask until I didn't love it. And I have to agree with Miss Brown Beauty, it did feel like it drew the moisture out of my skin. And um, in Dr. Dre's video, if you go to around like the three minute mark, I'll link it below. She doesn't recommend it because she said that with the uh, flavorants in it 
and the fragrance in it, it can lead to you like licking your lips more often, which can lead to, you know, dryness and dermatitis and so on and so forth on the lips. She wasn't impressed with the sleeping mask either, the facial sleeping mask either. And then I think that's what kind of happened to both me and Miss Brown Beauty with, you know, our lips feeling dried out. I didn't actually get so far as to having like dermatitis on my lips, but I definitely felt like after a while, like it just wasn't doing what it was, what it had originally was doing. Now I just use the Ulta Juice Infused Lip Oil. That works wonders for me, but also Vaseline, or if you wanna use Aquaphor, that, that's also a great option as well. Now let's talk about some products that are worth the hype, according to you guys. So Just Amira says that Paula's Choice 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant is definitely worth the hype. It literally removes your dead skin cell and minimizes your pores and overall makes your skin softer. Chemical exfoliants over physical any day. I'd say this is a personal preference because there are different types of exfoliants and you know everyone's skin is different. I also prefer a chemical exfoliant over a physical exfoliant, but I, there are things that I do in my routine that can be considered physical exfoliants, like just the action of you know washing your skin and rubbing your skin can be considered you know some physical exfoliation. I also sometimes use a derma flash, like back when I was you know, trying to get the, the peach fuzz off my face. That's a form of physical exfoliation. And years ago, I was using the Clarisonic brush, which I gotta see if mine works. I bought a whole bunch of the brush heads when they went out of business thinking like, oh my God, I gotta make sure I use this and I didn't use it. And then some people prefer enzyme exfoliants. I know Dr. Alexa Stevens has a couple of videos on those. So, you know, check that out. Now the thing with pores and the language that brands use sometimes with pores, it's, it's semantics because your pore size is gonna remain the same. What changes is the elasticity in your skin. So as your skin, you know, tends to like, you know, with age, you know, little gravity hit, you might notice that your pores become more apparent because it's not so much that the pores all of a sudden was just like got bigger, it's that your skin is a little bit more, you know, like if you take some silly putty and you poke little, take a little pin, you poke little holes in it. If you stretch that silly putty out, those holes are gonna appear larger because it's the, the silly putty stretch out, right? But then if you kind of mush it back together, the pores appear back to normal, right? Other things that can make your pores look larger, if you got a bunch of gunk in them, debris and, and whatnot, that can make the pores look a little larger as well. So if you make sure that, you know, that you're properly exfoliating with something like the Polish Choice BHA, but it's not so much that, you're, that things can shrink your pores, it's the skin around it that's, Hopefully that makes sense. Moving on to cleansers that are worth the hype. Don't make fun of me. I'm, I'm trying because I, you know, I like to be respectful and at least, you know, try to pronounce people's names. And I don't have you here to ask you how to pronounce it. So forgive me. I'm going to assume that this is Mignon Alverson. Um, she says that Albaline, it's underrated and deserves hype. It literally has helped restore my skin barrier, skin barrier. It's the best. So I um, looked this up and it is a fragrance-free moisturizing cleanser. It says that Albaline Moisturizing Cleanser liquefies on contact with your skin to gently and thoroughly dissolve makeup, dirt, and environmental residue, smooth on Albaline tissue off, or remove with a soft cloth or cotton pad and see how much cleaner and softer your skin can be. No soap or water is needed with Albaline, so you're not left with the soap and water dryness. Use daily Albaline cleansing balm, helps keep your complexion clean, soft and younger looking. Plus Albaline is paraben and preservative. Well, okay, we, we know that the paraben and preservative, okay. So you can feel confident with what you're using on your skin. So I can definitely see how she would love something like this, especially since she mentioned that it helped restore her skin barrier. Cause when you, if you cleanse your skin too aggressively, it can kind of cause, you know, little micro tears in the skin. Sometimes people think like you have to have like this squeaky clean kind of feel after you wash your face. And that can lead to, you know, excessive dryness that can lead to other issues that could lead to, unfortunately, all roads seem to lead to hyperpigmentation if you haven't noticed when I mean, you have skin of color. But yeah, I can definitely see that being, you know, because it's very gentle, that it, it she's not drying her skin out with whatever cleanser maybe she was using before or whatever else she was using in her routine before. It doesn't sound like something I personally would want to use because, I mean, I guess I could just wash it off. I, I would try it. I would try it just because she said that it deserves hype. I would at least be curious enough to try it out uh, down the line. But if you've tried this product and you agree, 
let us know in the comments. Moving on to the miscellaneous category with products that are worth the hype. 166 Anna says, Honestly, petroleum jelly like Vaseline or Aquaphor, it's simple, it's working. And very true. Dr. Dre actually has a video on petrolatum and how, oh my God, petrolatum gets so fear mongered. Uh, make sure you check out, I'm pretty sure she has more than one video on this because I feel like I hear her say it a lot. She debunks a lot of the misinformation that's out there about, you know, people saying that petroleum jelly is toxic and check out her videos. Aquaphor and Vaseline are similar-ish, except that Vaseline is pure white petrolatum, 100%, and then Aquaphor, it has 41% uh, petrolatum in it, but then it also has mineral oil, sericin, lanolin alcohol, panthenol, glycerin. I'll actually link to the ingredient list where you can check this out. And then what I like to do is I'll Google the ingredient and then I'll put Polish Choice so that it pulls it up on the Polish Choice website. Now, I know that is a bias because Polish Choice also sells products, but I trust the information from that brand. They cite their sources and whatnot. Just don't be going on um, the EWG website because they'll, they'll scare you about everything. Um, but I have to agree. I like, um, I, I've used Vaseline in the past, obviously, you know, growing up in New York, you, your mama put that Vaseline on your face on a cold winter day so that, that the wind burns don't get your delicate, you know, baby skin. I would have to say, I probably use Aquaphor more out of the two. Aquaphor, if you remember, um, acne expert Marie Claire Cates was on the channel and she mentioned that either Aquaphor or pure Vaseline, no cocoa butter, just a pure regular Vaseline, you know, you can use that on the areas where your mask tends to rub up against your skin to prevent that friction. And this is if you, you know, have to wear the mask for more than three, four or five hours a day. People tend to think that Vaseline or Aquaphor is gonna uh, clog your pores and break you out. It is it's not. What it can do though, if you put something that is comedogenic on and then you, you know, seal that in with some like Vaseline or Aquaphor, that can, but it's not necessarily the Vaseline or the Aquaphor that's breaking you out. It's, you know, whatever the other comedogenic thing was. But yeah, I use Aquaphor for a lot of things. I've used it on the mask areas. I don't wear masks often because I usually am in places where I don't need to wear a mask, AKA my house. I do like to use Aquaphor. Like I'll use a little bit. I'll put some inside my nose when I'm on a flight because the airplane, even when I'm wearing a mask on a plane, the dry air tends to like just dry out my nose and I always almost get sick and now is not the time for me to be getting sick because then it's like, okay, what do I have? Also something that I usually keep in my bag when I travel because if like I'm clumsy, if I scrape myself or something, it is something that after, you know, as the thing is healing, I can kind of rub that on there. So a lot of good uses for it. And I would definitely say that, although Vaseline did have like a moment when people were slugging, basically people were, you know, putting their hydrating uh, serums and their moisturizer on, and then they would put a layer of Vaseline on top of it. And the Vaseline acted as an occlusive layer to kind of prevent moisture loss. So Vaseline did kind of have a moment then, but I agree that, you know, it can it can use a little bit more hype because a lot of people fear mongered it and people are scared of it. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if there are products that you believe should be added to the overhyped or underhyped list. Get in the comments and let me know all about that. Maybe this might be a part three, you know, if y'all follow the directions and, <laughs> actually elaborate on why a product is overhyped or underhyped. Anyway, guys, follow me on social links will be in the description box and I will see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.